All right, I want to start by this once again going over quickly the problem of input to output delay and bring out one additional uh, piece of information or you know uh, one definition which is sometimes required in order to understand that part better, right? Now one thing you need to keep in mind with regard to all of the delay models that we are using over here, right? The important thing to remember is these are at the end of the day certain models that are used in order to convert the actual delay of a signal which ultimately is some analog waveform into a number, right, some kind of a specific number saying this is the delay through a gate. Okay. So in that let's consider first the wire, right, supposing we just have a wire and there is some transition that happens over here. What we say is the same transition will happen over here after a certain amount of time. Okay. How is that time determined? By the RC delay corresponding to the wire. If there is another transition on the wire, then after some time that will corresponding to be another transition on the other end as well. Okay. And let's say that the wire causes very quickly again after that, then once again that will also show up at the output. So in other words, every change in the input will correspondingly show up at the output with some amount of delay. Okay. This kind of a model of delay is known as transport delay. Okay. What it is saying is that every change at the input will show up at the output with some amount of delay. Typically, wires or just some kind of a resistive capacitive path if it is present will follow this kind of a model. Right? Effectively what is saying is every change in the input will be seen at the output with some amount of delay. If there could also be an inversion or something in between. I am not talking about the nature of the transition at the output. It is not that the output must necessarily follow the input directly. But every change in the input will directly go through and show a corresponding change at the output. This is known as a transport delay phenomenon. Okay? The other model is what is used for things like gate. So here, if I have, let's say that this value is 1 and this gate is from 0 to 1, the output will also change from 0 to 1. Okay? Now let's say after some time this changes back to 0, the output will change back to 0. But the important point over here is, supposing this changes back to 1 very quickly, right? what we then say is, the final value over here should also be 1, the initial value should also be 1. Since this interval was very small, what do we mean by very small? Typically what we say is, if it is less than the propagation delay of the gate itself, this entire transition gets suppressed. Okay. So in other words, for a for something like a gate, a logic gate, what we mean by delay is that once the input changes, that will start causing a change in the output. But the change in the output is due to some internal mechanism that is happening inside the gate. Okay. If that internal mechanism doesn't have enough time for its transition and the gate changes value once again before it has finished, then this short change that we have seen over here will be completely eliminated at the output. Okay. So in other words, as far as this particular situation is concerned, the output will just remain high. It will not go low at all. Okay. So this is a short pulse, duration less than delay of the gate. Okay. Such systems are supposed are said to follow an inertial delay model. Right? There has to be a certain amount of 
duration for the transition only then the output will actually be considered to also follow the input okay so these are just two models that are used they it is not to say that gates fundamentally follow an inertial delay pattern where a bias follow transport delay these are models that we use for our convenience to understand how these systems work okay now what does this have to do with our discussion of yesterday supposing i consider a black box let's say with a clock signal over here and an output over here right or let's not even talk about it as a clock signal let's just talk about some input data going through to the output y okay now if this is the case let's say that what was there inside this black box was inertial delay was a transport delay right versus if it was inertial delay the models are going to be different how is it different essentially what it's saying is if this was transport delay as soon as the first data has gone through enters the system itself second data can be applied okay now this is necessarily a somewhat vague statement what do i mean by the first data entering the system the second data then being applied and so on what i'm basically saying is if i made a transition i can immediately after make another transition and both of those will reflect properly at the output okay whereas if this is inertial delay that cannot be the case after i have applied the data i know that it takes a certain amount of time for it to reflect at the output only after that time has passed am i allowed to make my next change in input so this is something to do with the way that we are modeling the system not anything fundamentally about how it works okay now does a given system actually follow an inertial delay or a transport delay model it's not there's no sort of experimental method by which we can verify that it's one or the other because even though something might be assumed to follow a transport delay model what happens in practice is when i apply a pulse and a wire it will probably get slightly spread out or slightly delayed or the sl slope at the output might not be the same as the slope at the input which means that some short pulses at the input might not show up at the output that does not necessarily make it an inertial delay model in the same way i might have a gate with a time with an inertial delay of 5 nanoseconds but it turns out that i can actually apply the next input even after 4 nanoseconds and it will faithfully show up at the output okay so it's not like there's a hard and fast difference between what is inertial delay what is transport delay these are models that we use in order to make our understanding of these systems simpler okay coming back to the question from yesterday supposing this clock was being applied to the system and i'm considering the output and let's say that the internal structure was such that the clock was going through this going to a flip flop going through some combinational logic and then coming out all that i can do as a user is to measure delay between these two points okay I apply a pulse here at time zero. According to our calculations from yesterday, at time twenty-two, the data comes out here. Okay. 
ஓகே all that i am saying from my analysis is without knowing in order to convey this information to someone else it just needs to use this as a black box the only piece of information you can give is 22 nanoseconds you cannot say anything about the internal structure or you could say but then that makes a tiny model more complicated okay the simplest model that we have over here is to say next data is applied at 22 nanoseconds so this is the sense in which the clock to output delay is being defined in the problem of yesterday now what we should also tell you is for any such system like this there could be multiple ways of defining it let's say that the your person who is going to be using it has more detailed knowledge of the internal structure then i could tell them that this clock delay is actually just a transport delay up to the clock so that it enters over there every time that i apply a clock it will take 2 nanoseconds of delay for it to reach the flip clock in that case i could make use of the information that perhaps i don't need to wait for 22 nanoseconds i need to wait only for 20 let's say that the output combinational logic was also a transport delay then effectively what it's saying is anything that comes out of the flip clock is then guaranteed to go through that combinational logic which means that i can now bring down the time between successive input data or changes in the flip flop input to pcq of the flip flop input right as soon as it has changed i can once again change and apply the next change and so on okay so that depends on more detailed internal knowledge of what the structure is like without knowing that the only thing you can do is the boundary condition specify what are the input and output the input to output delay and what should be the minimum value of that okay any questions on this part all right so going further we then took up another problem which was a slightly more complex problem where we said we have some input i don't remember the diagram from yesterday so let's just make something up now what we said was this is one clock boundary or in other words there are some registers over here this is another clock boundary once again the output over here are registers okay we saw yesterday that combinational loop feedback loops within the combinational logic are not permitted for our kind of design okay it's not that they are fundamentally not permitted in circuits of course nobody prevents you from taking a nand gate and connecting its output back to its input which is of course not going to be very useful but even if you have let's say a sr latch which is two nand gates connected back to back nobody can prevent you from making such a system all that we are saying is that cannot be analyzed using the techniques that we are discussing right now Okay. Now, given that the propagation delay through each and every one of these circuits, right, which I call nodes. The by the way, one of the things you will notice over here is the terminology that we use over here tends to go a lot towards that in graph theory. Okay. So, for example, each of these circuit elements is called a node or a vertex. Right. and each of these wires is an edge but in the circuit terminology it would probably be called a net right a net essentially connects the output of some gate to the input of other gate okay 
in the graph terminology typically one edge would only be between one pair of vertices whereas the next can be from the output of one gate to multiple other gates okay so all of that the fact that it can be to multiple other gates that you can have so called hyper edge which is from one vertex to multiple other vertices and so on we are leaving all that aside we are considering a simplified model where every edge is only between one pair of vertices every vertex essentially indicates one computational or combinational logic element right and every combinational logic element has a certain propagation delay associated with it. okay so now how do we do the analysis of this how do we find out what is the maximum speed that this system works one way by which this can be done is to go in a so called level ordered fashion what we say is we start with zero over here right add the delays up to these points and making the simplifying assumption that the delays are all one but if it was not one then you would have to actually add the delays up to those points okay so the number that you would put over here instead of one would be the actual delay through each one of those gates right now at this point things become tricky or yeah at this point things can be slightly tricky supposing the arrival time at the two next corresponding to this gate were different right in this case of course they are the same both the signals we can consider arrival at time 1 itself which means that the output will be ready at time Two. Okay, but supposing they were different, then what should you do? You want to find the longest route through this path, uh, through this circuit, right? The path which has the longest possible delay, because that is the worst case as far as we are concerned. So I take the maximum among those two, then add the delay of that corresponding gate and say this is the arrival time and the output of that gate. Okay. we'll see an example of that shortly in fact this one right here this has arrival time 2 this has arrival time 1 okay at the output of this it will be 3 because the worst case among those two was 2 and 1 that is 2 plus the propagation delay of this vertex itself is 1 so total of 3 right going in the same way this also becomes 3 this also becomes 3 right how did I get that because it has 2 and 1 feeding into it now here 3 and 3 feeding into it 4 3 and 3 4 4 and 4 this becomes 5 4 and 3 this also becomes 5 right so effectively what we have done is we have gone through this graph or circuit in one single path from beginning to end okay the important part was how did we define beginning and ending right all the nodes or the vertices that are or the circuit elements that are closest to the input boundary we consider to have level 0 okay anything which is connected to something in level 0 will have level at least 1, it has to be greater than 0 ok so this one for example it has two inputs one from level 0 one from level 1 right so what we say is the actual level of this one is the maximum among those two levels plus one okay as long as you can make sure that you go through this entire circuit in increasing order of level 
right? You can be sure that you will always keep on accumulating the delays. You will never end up with a situation where you calculate the propagation delay up to the output of some gate and then you find that some other input is coming in which has a greater delay. Okay? So as long as you can put the circuit element into this level order and then do the traversal through this graph, right? Going through it step by step and adding up the delay, you can actually indirectly in one path through the circuit find out what is the maximum delay that is there in the circuit. Okay? Now, why is this important? This was the question that I raised at the end of yesterday's class. Why should we even bother with all of this? Right? The reason is, you can take a simple example. Supposing I had a circuit which looks something like this. How many paths are there through this circuit? Input to output path. I don't need an exact number, I'm just asking for approximately what kind of, how would you go about determining the number of paths? I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven stages over here. Right? The way that I've drawn it. A total of 14 circuit elements, 14 combinational elements in this circuit. Number of paths. Would it be 14? Would it be much larger than that? Much smaller than that? So what is an example of a path that you can think of through this circuit? One possible path is just going through all of these circuit elements to the output. Huh? Right. So there are other things, for example one is goes like this, then goes up, then goes down, then goes up. Right? All of these are paths through the circuit. If I wanted to do the timing analysis for this circuit, finding out individual paths at a time, I would have something on the order of 2 power 7 paths through this circuit. Right? Even though I have only 7 stages or 14 total elements, no, 12 total elements, right? I could end up with something on more, more than 100 different paths. So the number of paths in the circuit can be exponentially dependent on the number of circuit elements. Okay? So because of that, if you try and do this analysis, timing analysis in general, by finding out all parts in the circuit and finding out which one has the greatest amount of delay, chances are that you will end up with a circuit which is too complicated for you to do it. Too complicated meaning it will just take too long to actually do this kind of a calculation. Right? So instead what we say is if we use this level ordered fashion, what we can say is we can essentially go through the entire circuit in one sweep. At each step, at each step I essentially just find out what is the maximum delay coming into the node from all the circuit elements before it. Because they all have level less than this node, they are guaranteed to be completed first before I reach this node. And then calculate the delay to the output of this node. Okay? The only remaining question is this level ordering. Can I do this easily? Okay? And it turns out there are fairly simple algorithms in graph theory which allow you to do something like this. Okay? So to find out whether or not Right, or rather how do I put the nodes in an order such that always the ones with the higher levels are guaranteed to be later on than the ones that are of lower levels. 
సచ్ సేవింగ్ చేయకూడదు అంటారు ఓకే సో దిస్ ఎంటైర్ అప్రోచ్ ఇస్ వాట్ ఇస్ నోన్ అటిక్ టైమింగ్ అనాలిసిస్ usually you see it referred to as SCA. Okay. Static timing analysis is used extensively in all forms of digital design because it essentially tells you what is the longest path, the maximum delay through any given circuit and what is the maximum frequency at which a particular circuit can operate successfully without having problems. Yeah. Number of nodes in general. Huh? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, no. I'm not saying that it's exactly 2 power 14 or 2 power n, where n is the number of nodes. I'm saying it is exponentially related to. So it's sort of like a proportionality. That's all I'm saying. 2 power something into n. Okay. First of all, it depends on whether you have this kind of a structure in your circuit. There might be a circuit where everything is in one level. In which case, the number of paths is zero. Or it's just equal to the number of nodes itself. In the worst case, what we have is that it is dependent on some kind of a structure like this, where it can be 2 power something related to n. Okay. Even in this case, supposing I had some other levels which had different structures, where I had like three levels in it, then it could be something like three power. Okay? So that is not what I am concerned about. I am not concerned about exact equality factors over there. I am not saying two power n where n is the number of nodes. Two power something related to n, which means that it is going to be, in the worst case, it can be two power let's say n by 2 or something like that. Okay? As far as I am concerned, 2 power n by 2 and 2 power n show the same behavior. They grow very rapidly as n increases. That's all that I am concerned about. Okay? Alright, so static timing analysis is this approach where we essentially say that I will take a circuit, break it up into levels, take the delay at each individual level, find the maximum across each of those levels, proceed level by level, until I reach the output and that gives me the worst case delay from input to output. Okay. The important thing that we have done over here is we have defined input and output in terms of clock boundaries. Right. So, supposing I had some kind of a circuit which looks like this kind of structures. So, in other words, there is feedback in the circuit. Okay? Feedback in the circuit is permitted provided that there are registers to make sure that they capture the feedback. Right? Because after all, the most fundamental kind of finite state machine has this kind of a structure. Right? There are some inputs, there are some outputs and there are state registers. So, in other words, even something as fundamental as a finite state machine cannot be implemented without feedback. Okay? So, the previous statement that I made that feedback is not allowed is not a general statement as far as circuits is concerned. It only says the combinational path alone. If I take that, there should be no feedback loop that are purely combinational. In general, there will always be feedback loop containing register. Any kind of finite state machine is an example of that. Present state plus input is used to create next state. Okay, so next state depends on pre or present state. Which means that that itself is a form of feedback. Okay. If I have something of this sort, I will need to break this up and say, This 
Je te crois comme Dieu. 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 Ok? What happened? The combination of logic is there. The output of this log 3 goes back into the combinational logic. There is also a connection from the output of this directly to flip flop 2 and the output of this last flip flop also goes into the combinational logic. What happens to the output of the combinational logic in this case it all goes to flip flop number 4. So effectively what I have done is I have taken the outputs of the flip flop as my input, the inputs of my flip flop as my system output. In between them I have got this combinational logic and this is where SPA is performed. So this is a sort of slightly simplified model of how static timing analysis is done in general circuits. Okay. In reality there are a few complications. For example, what you will find is that the assumption that has been made over here is that all the flip flops have the same clock. Okay. Because I have automatically assumed that the levels and everything at the input can all be assumed to be zero. That's not strictly speaking true is the clock leading into each of those flip flops itself has some skew. Right? And similarly at the output also. For those of you who are interested, the there is a timing analysis workshop which every year conducts a timing a programming contest for implementing these kinds of timing al timing analysis algorithms. Okay. Of course you need to have reasonably good programming skills in order to be able to do well in that. IIT Madras has been doing pretty well, in fact Chaitanya was here and uh, Aman and uh, Thiraj, three of them, came third in last year's content. Okay. So this is definitely something which those of you who are more interested in this should take up. Usually the contest is announced somewhere around October or so. So keep an eye out for that. If you are interested in doing more on this, it will be something interesting to see. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next related topic, which I have touched upon briefly yesterday, which is the problem of pipeline. Okay. So pipelining is essentially addressing the question of. All right, I have found out what is the maximum delay through this circuit. I have found out the maximum frequency at which it can work. I want to improve that. Okay. How do I speed up the circuit? How do I make it operate at a faster rate? Right. So let's say that I have found some circuit where I have done the timing analysis and found that there are some logic blocks over here. which finally leads me to some delay of t. I want to operate at a frequency greater than 1 over t or a time period less than t. First of all, what will happen if I directly do that with this circuit? Effectively, if I operate this circuit at a time greater than or a time less than t, what will happen is some signal which has gone through this first flip flop and then gone through the combinational logic would not yet have had time to reach the second flip flop before the next input comes. Okay? And because of the way inertial delay works, what it means is that that next input can end up cancelling out whatever is the effect of this previous input. So whatever I have got at the output just gets messed up. I don't finish my computation properly. Before I have had a chance to finish the work that I am trying to do, 
बनेक टेम्पो सरकम एंड मेस टेम्पल ओके सो नॉर्मली इफ आई ऑपरेट अ सर्क्यूट एट हायर देन इट रेटेड फ्रीक्वेंसी आई सिंपली कैन नॉट से एनीथिंग अबाउट वॉट आउटपुट विल बी विल इट डैमेज द सर्क्यूट इट मे और मे नॉट डैमेज विल कम मोर बिकॉज ऑफ इफेक्ट लाइक पावर कंसम्शन एंड हीटिंग एंड सो राइट but not due to wrong functioning in other words just the fact that you are getting the wrong computation is not going to damage the circuit by itself but you are definitely going to get wrong data let's say that you are using this for a calculator you are trying to add two numbers you are not given enough time internally for the two numbers to get added properly you will get the wrong result okay so that is the effect of operating something at higher than its rated clock frequency now how can i increase the clock frequency for this circuit how can i improve let's consider an even simpler circuit all of them have propagation delay equal to 1 time only. okay so in other words t in this case is equal to 4 I want to operate at a higher frequency. Let's say t equal to two. How do I do that? Huh? I'm assuming that T C Q, T setup, and so on are all zero over here. Okay. So let's just assume that these are ideal resistors. In that case, what you can say is what? Put another resistor out here. Right? If I had one more register over here, now the longest path becomes t equal to two, right? The question is, am I allowed to do this in general? What are what is the potential problem that could happen if I do something like this? In this particular circuit, is there a problem likely to happen at all? First of all, or is this perfectly valid for this circuit? So that question actually depends on a little bit on the nature of the circuit elements themselves, right? The assumption we make over here is that the circuit elements are time invariant. what that means is let's say that this value over here i call it some x right at every clock cycle what i'm saying is that the value is some x of n okay i just use another diagram to illustrate this what we have over here is x of n is being fed in as the input At every clock cycle, a new data is being fed in. What can you say about what will be the value seen over here at the output of the flip flop? What is the relationship between that output and x of n? Huh? It will be x of n minus one, right? Why is that? Because what I'm saying is, on every clock cycle, I'm introducing a new data into the system. So x of n is some sequence of numbers or values, whatever it is, some sequence of digital values, right? At the output of the flip flop, what I'm going to see during that same clock cycle is whatever was there at the input of the flip flop one cycle earlier. So if x of n was present or if some value was present at the input of the flip flop at time zero. That value will be present at the output of the flip flop at time one, and some new value will be present at the input of the flip flop. That new value will be present at the output of the flip flop at time two. Okay. So in general, if x of n is present at the input of the flip flop, x of n minus one is present at the output. Okay. I'm going through some combinational logic. 
the combinational logic does not have a notion of time. It does not say this cycle or this cancel. Whatever input you give it, immediately after some propagation delay, the output will set. Right? And we have some output over here. Y of n. Okay? So same thing holds over here. If I am calling this output as Y of n, then effectively the input over here is Y of n plus 1. Right? So that relationship holds between them. So all that I am saying is Y of n plus 1 is defined as a sequence which takes the values of X of n minus 1 plus some combinational logic. Okay? Now as long as your circuit elements over here are time invariant, it doesn't matter whether I give the sequence X of n or X of n minus 1 or X of n minus 2. What do I mean by that sequence? It means that at some particular point in time, I give the starting value of x, then I next cycle I give the next value, next cycle I give the next value and so on. It doesn't matter at what point in time I start it. It's a time invariant circle, so whenever I give the data, after some propagation delay, the output will appear. Okay? So in other words, as far as the time invariant system is concerned, it does not matter whether I take in x of n minus 1 or x of n minus 2. I will just get a correspondingly delayed version of the output. Okay? So in other words, as far as this circuit itself is concerned, supposing I change it around and make it, then this will become x of n minus 1, this will become x of n minus 2, okay? This will become y of n and this will become y of n minus 1, right? Corresponding to d. That's the only difference that has happened. Everything has got shifted back by one cycle. Okay? So as long as this kind of behavior is permitted, that is I can introduce a new flip flop or a new register over here and just shift everything backwards in time. Right? It means that I can also do it between the circuit elements. Going back to this circuit, I can put this red flip flop in the middle over there without changing the functionality. Okay? And still get the correct behavior from the output. Except that maybe now it is delayed by one extra clock cycle. So I have to wait for one more clock cycle. Right at the beginning, I have to wait for one clock cycle. After that, all the data comes out successfully in successive clock cycle. So there is just one cycle that everything has flipped by. Okay? That cycle, that delay that we have introduced over there is usually called the latency. The amount of time by which all the, the entire sequence has been shifted. Okay, not any individual input or output, the entire sequence itself has been shifted by a certain delay. That delay is called the latency. Okay? Now, this process of introducing a new register somewhere in the middle is called pipeline. Okay? Effectively, it is also I have taken a long chain of work and broken it up into two parts and said, okay, start working on the first part, then take a break, then you go half break, then again on the next clock cycle start working on whatever was remaining and go forward. Okay? So now instead of taking one clock cycle for the data to reach directly from the input all the way through to the output, it takes two clock cycles. It first has to go up to the middle, take a break and then go up through to the output. Okay? Now, the question is, can this kind of pipelining always be done? Are there any restrictions on it? How do you do it in general? Right? One of the issues that you are going to face is, supposing I have a circuit which looks like this. Again, all of them have a delay of 
Now what is first of all the T of this one? 3, right? So right now as it stands T is equal to 3. Can I reduce it to T is equal to 2? How would you do it? The question I am going to ask is, one thing that I can see is it's the longer, it's the path on top which has a delay of 3, not the path at the bottom, right? Can I just do this? Introduce the register over here. Is this safe to do? Or have I changed the functionality in some way? Okay. What has happened now? The data which is taking two different paths, right? One path alone is getting delayed, the other path is not. Okay. So this is fundamentally wrong, this cannot be done. Right? But on the other hand, supposing I do this, now what have I done? I have put one additional flip flop in the lower part even though I did not need it. Right? As far as the Delay is concerned, I did not need a flip-flop in the lower part. But I have put one anyway. Now what has happened is, the data which has come through to here and to here is now synchronized and summed out over here. Okay? This is valid. So in general what is the approach that can be used for doing this? What we need to make sure of is that as there is a forward path going through the circuit, if I put a flip flop anywhere in that forward path, I need to make sure that everything in that direction gets delayed by the same amount. Okay? In terms of graph theory this is equivalent to the so called speed forward cut set, right? where we are saying that everything is goes forward in one direction, I find an appropriate set of edges which if I remove it will break the graph into two parts and make sure that I put a register on every one of those edges. That way everything which is coming from the input gets delayed by the same amount before it reaches the output. So everything is once again synchronous. Okay? Alright, we will stop here for now. We are almost done with the topic of timing analysis. After which we will move on to other topics in design. The main parts of this course which deal with combinational logic, sequential logic and timing are pretty much done at this point. Now it is going to be more a question of taking up specific kinds of circuit elements and seeing how they are designed.